Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy One Gun once again, and today we're gonna actually try my hand at doing the actual tutorial. Um I've been like doing these walkthroughs and the walk walkthroughs are mostly like the process I actually do when I uh put my scenes and stuff together. So, you know, and have I mean it's for people who already know what they're doing and it's a little insight of my pro of, of my progress and my pipeline. This today is a uh, tutorial because I was gonna pull some pull a prop from out of Dad's and bring it over into my uh, into iClone so I could work on it. So what we have here is a uh, lamp fixture that came out of the Iron Fort uh, model, and let me show you what what it is. Okay. So at Dad Studio, they have the Iron Fort model, which is very cool. And it comes with all these towers, these huge walls. They don't, they don't come with vehicles, you know, don't have vehicles. But uh, here's some of the cool stuff, the scenes people have been making with it. Um, and like I said, they don't come with these little mechs or these airplanes or anything. But all you get is the, uh, the these walls and you get these towers. You get these buildings that go in there. It's just it's just uh, awesome. Uh, it's it's like a modular kit, so you can customize it any which way you want to. It comes with a gate. It comes with all type of cool stuff. It doesn't come with the tanks. I wish it did, but it don't. It's something you got to buy separate. It comes with like this little power plant thing. And inside the wall, you have these little little uh, platforms where the guards can walk around, and aim the guns out, or whatever. But it it was it was pretty cool. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, "This is what I need. Now, this is what I need for my scene. I have to have this." And it has two uh, different type of uh, buildings. Um, it has this building, it has this type of building, and it has these little garages for I guess to put your little tanks and stuff in. I guess this would be the barracks where all your soldiers are. And these little elevators right there, those actually do work inside of Dash Studio. But when you port those over into into uh, Dash or whatever, you have to like probably take it to like another application like Max or Maya and separate it by its element and and then bring it bring all both of those parts over into uh, 3D Exchange and uh, when you finally get them into iClone to assemble them in the side of iClone so they will it will work, but. It's a nice prop, very nice prop. Uh, yeah, it comes with this like little power plant. I don't know if you, let me show a picture of it. No. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice model, very nice. And it's, 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 you know, here are the walls. Like I said, the walls are because of my little gate, front gate, the corners. And yeah, that's what the inside looks like. Got these little lamps here, tower, little power plant. But yeah, and and believe it or not, it's relatively cheap. Uh, if you're, I think if you're part of the, uh, if you sign up for Dash Studio or Dash 3D uh, PC Platinum Plus card, Platinum Plus Club, and you pay them your seven or eight bucks a month, you'll uh, be able to uh, get it for like a buck ninety nine. So enough for the free advertisement. So what I did here is I went into my Iron Fort pack and uh, up and I went to the two lamps. I did this lamp already, but I'm gonna say, well, I'm about to do this one, so why not just make a tutorial how I'll do it. So I got this lamp post here, and it's pretty cool looking. I guess it has these little rings for people to walk up, you know, if they have to fix the light post. But my the thing that we're going to do is first we're going to export this out as a prop. Then we're gonna take it into 3D Max to make further adjustments, which is quite simple. It's a very quite simple task, but we're gonna take some 3D Max and we're gonna move those light bulbs. Um, so, and keep the light cover and replace those lights with the fluorescent lights inside of iClone. So here we go. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do, since I have my prop here already, I'm gonna to go to File, Export and just put down just L A M P lamp underscore three. It's already happened. No, no, no. 
underscore fool because I already have a couple other lamps in here already. Alright, and I just hit save. And then all the options come up. I just uh, go to props, embed textures, and I always make sure I click these two because if you don't for some reason, it will not export or show up inside of a uh, <clears throat> inside of a uh, three exchange. So just click those two, and everything's all right. I had to worry about no more. So push accept, and it's there. So I can close this and open up uh, 3D Max. Okay, so we're been over here in 3D Max, and I bought the prop in, and. Oops. I brought the prop in. So now we're going to start the process of making this so I'll be able to do able to put the lights in when I take it over there to iClone. So I'm gonna click it and right click on top of it and convert it to an edible poly. And then right click it again and select element. So what that does is is instead of uh instead of like what it would do at first was select the whole hold on, let me show you let me take it off polygon because if I ha if I don't select it by element it's just gonna well, hold on let me uh, let me go back a couple steps one two three okay so if I didn't select it, if I can I select it by element it won't select parts the certain parts of it and I won't be able to detach it the correct way so I won't be able to take it into 3D Exchange and look at the separate parts. You'll just look at it as one big whole part. So the reason why I convert this to edible poly is that I can come here and select what elements I want in here. Oops, no button. Here we go. I can select what parts I want in here to to manipulate. So that's why I go by element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the glass cover here. And I'm going to move it out the way. So I have access to these two little light tubes. And these two little light tube parts right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete those. Delete, 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 delete. Then I'm going to pull the, the glass cover right back on top of it. I want that totally empty for when I export it out. Now for the glass cover, I'm gonna go over here and I believe it's this button. Yeah, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to let's see, create a new layer. Uh, nope, that's not it. Hold on one second. Let's see, I want to create. It. Hold up, I made a mistake. You ain't supposed to add a new layer yet because there's something else we have to do to this thing before we put it on a separate layer for it to be exported out. And we have to go down here to uh, up under the modify, under the, under the modify uh, tab here. You want to go down here to detach and just click detach. Once you hit detach, it's going to ask you to name the object. After you name it, uh, after you uh, name it, just make it. Uh, what can I call this? Let's put it light cover. C O V E R. Light cover. And just push OK. So now, so now it's two different objects now. So now when I take it into iClone, iClone will be able to see these are two different objects and I'll be able to do further editing on it. So that's it. That's all I have to do. And we didn't have to use the layers. I had, I was thinking of some other something else I, I was doing earlier, but don't worry about the layers. It's just that's all you have to do. Just select it, you know, bring it into 3D Max, turn it to an edible poly, select the element you want to detach from it, go into the modify tab, detach it, and then over here in the on the side it will show you that that is a separate object from that from the uh, original object. And don't forget to rename it. Okay, so let's get this over into let's get this over into iClone 3D Exchange.
Okay, so now I'm in 3D Exchange. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things to this before I take it over because right now the way it is is that if I put a light inside here, the light's not going to really show through. So I want to turn the opacity down on this light cover. Now, if I was to have brought this prop in as is before taking it over into, into uh, 3D Max, the problem is is that I, it wouldn't have saw this light cover as a separate object you know, attached to this object. And when you do that, you won't be able to go in there and modify the opacity channels inside of iClone or 3D Exchange. But now since I've done that, since I've detached it and made it a separate, a separate, uh, a separate prop, a sub prop basically to the main prop, I can go in here and take the opacity down to where it's clear, where it's clear. Right there, that's that's good, about the nine percent. So you can still see the casing, but now when I put the lights inside or inside of iClone, they'll be able to come through. You're able to see them. So that's it. That's all I had to do in here. This uh, turn the opacity down. So now I'm going to just send this over to iClone six. Push OK, and it's done. So next we're going to go inside of iClone and. Yeah, we're going to go inside iClone 6 and put putting the lights in. So that'll take a second. So i see you back here in a minute. Hey, okay, so now we're over here in iClone 6. And we're going to pull out the fluorescent lamp. And I, I like the fluorescent lamp is just so freaking cool, man. It's, it's it's like the best prop I think they ever made because I can adapt it to so many, so many other things, so many evil other things. But right now, let's get this thing into place. Let's uh, pull it over here. And let's move it this way. Let me get this. And what I'm doing is just basically getting this into a position to where I put this into. Yeah, just pull this over a little bit this way. And yeah, I just want to get this into position so I can be able to manipulate it. Straight there. And let me put that in there. And there you have it. You have a nice little street light here with the lights in it, with working lights. Well, sci-fi already knows street light. And you just pull up, you just adjust it to where you want it, and I think that's okay right there. I'm gonna pull this over a little bit because it needs a it needs a better half. So let's make a copy of that by just pushing Control. Uh, it sucks. By pushing Control, holding our Control button, and just sliding it over. To make a copy of it. And there you have it. A nice, pretty working lamp. And let me go to the visual. And let me cut on the HDR and all that other good stuff. And let me turn this to. Uh, let me turn it to that. And turn the bloom scale up some. Then after that, you probably want to take the lamp. You probably want to take this and actually, let me, so you just and then just push attach to the prop, and there you have it. That's how you do it. And now you have a working lamp and. Let me, let me get my other one out because the. <laughs> Here's the other one I made. And this is the other one I made. So. And this one is like has two just double lamp on it, but as you can see, it's a it's a it's it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool effect to put to these lights, and it was just easy to do. And I hope you all enjoyed this uh, little tutorial I did on this um, 
It is. It wasn't that very hard. It was just something simple to do. And uh, what you do is now you just take this prop right here and you and you uh, take this prop right here and you just add it there and just put. Oh, you have to replace it if I want to. Yeah, I'm going to replace it. Replace it. Yes. And now you have now you fit now instead of doing all this over again, you have a lamp for your scenes and there you have it. All right, so anybody, so if anybody else want to know anything else about this process, if I miss something, let me know in the comment section and hit that like button and please subscribe. Um, this is One Gun Sean. I'm signing off and peace.